Well, welcome back to Video Games and Consoles from the Loft, and today is a Double Bill Sunday Special, and this is the second instalment of the day. So if you missed the first instalment, don't forget to go back and check that out. Well, it's the second instalment, and this is Video Games and Consoles from the Loft. <laughs> Well, for round two of today, I have three items to show you. Two items are handhelds from the same company, and another item is a tabletop game, which is in direct relation to these items which I showed you in part four of season two. And that's exactly what I'm going to kick off with, and that's this, Gacken's Super Cobra. Well, we need Gacken's info, so let's head back to part four of season two. Well, Gakken are based in Japan and they were founded in 1947 and during the 1980s they released many popular handheld and tabletop games like this one. They also distributed them around the world to many other different companies like in the US, the UK and mainland Europe. And Gakken released Super Cobra around 1982 to 1983. Well, that's the background info. Let's take a closer look. So if you got the chance to see part four of this season, you'll notice that the game is in the same shape as the games I reviewed, and it's in fairly good condition. In the battery compartment, once again, you'll need to fit four C batteries, and uh, they'll last a long time as usual. It has a nicely, simply laid out screen, and it helps make your experience very easy during gameplay. As for the controls themselves, the control stick can move in all directions for easy movement. Uh, you have two positions on the on switch, one with the sound and one without the sound, and two main buttons for offloading missiles and bombs. Let's look at some gameplay. So during the gameplay you control your helicopter which can move horizontally from left to right. There are about 10 levels in all and the object is to blow the missiles up which will launch from the ground to try and blow you out of the air. You can also blow up the fuel tanks and enemy bases. It's a pretty good take on the original arcade of Super Cobra and it's still very entertaining and actually kind of hard. But another great tabletop from Gaken. It also has those three colours on the screen to make it quite bright and colourful and actually visually it looks extremely good and draws you into the game for a great gaming experience. Well the Super Cobra gameplay is actually rather similar to the game Defender that I own from part 4 of season 2. Although you own that helicopter and you have to and your object is to destroy the missile bases on the ground and avoid the contact with those ground to air missiles. It also has extremely responsive controls and I like the way you can maneuver your helicopter out of the way really really quickly and firing your missiles is fun as well and you can press it as many times and the game reacts just as quick as you press the button, which is excellent. It also has a really nicely laid out screen, and in all, this is a really good looking item. It's just such a shame I don't own the box, but hey, never mind, it's a great tabletop and one for any collector. Well, from a tabletop to two handhelds, let's check these out. And these are from Tiger, and this is Afterburner, and this is Sonic the Hedgehog 3. Well, in the earlier instalment of this Double Bill Sunday Special, Part 7, I reviewed Afterburner in the form of a tabletop game, and that is also from Tiger. So, let's rewind a couple of hours to get that Tiger info. Tiger, who are from our great friends across the water in America, founded in 1978, they have created many, many LCD games from tabletop to handheld games and many other toys as well, including the Furbies. 
and Tiger also licensed these items to other manufacturers around the world, including, yes, you know, Grandstand. And this is the case with the Afterburner game. As you can see, it has the Grandstand logo and was sold by Grandstand. And this one was released in 1989. And as for the Sonic 3, well, this is an original Tiger game and this was released in 1994. Well, there's nothing else left to do but take a closer look. So if we take a look at Afterburner, which has no packaging, but is in really great condition, it has a nice background theme which is extremely inviting. In the middle there, the main buttons are the game start, sound on and off, and the game on and off. You have your paddle to move your plane left and right, and on the right hand side you have your fire and bomb buttons to offload your missiles and machine guns. On the back of the game you have the sound speaker, and in the battery compartment you need to fit two double A batteries. So let's move on to Sonic 3. Well, you can see I've got the original blister pack packaging which looks very nice and colourful and on the back it gives you some uh, gameplay footage which is a nice touch. Inside the blister pack itself you've got the game and I've got the original instructions which are in excellent condition. And once again with this game it has a nice backdrop theme just like Afterburner and also has a few extra buttons. It has a four way control paddle, has an off switch, a sound on and off switch, pause and start and on and off switch. It has controls to use tails and pick up and a spin button to use sonic, has a nice speaker and you'll need two double A batteries. Let's look at some gameplay. Well, if you saw the earlier part today, part 7, you'll notice that the gameplay is practically the same. Flying your plane over the sea and engaging in enemy combat. The sound effects are excellent, the gameplay is very simple and really very addictive. The game screen also has an extra image in the background, whereas the tabletop version from earlier doesn't have that at all. But this game is extremely addictive and really, really good fun and a great handheld for taking just about anywhere. So if we move on to Sonic 3 now, well this actually has a pretty good storyline which actually follows the main game of Sonic 3. Uh, you team up with your mate Tails and you must battle through the Badniks and take care of Dr Robotnik on a powerful floating island. You must stop Dr Robotnik from stealing the Chaos Emeralds. You can also use that famous spin and dash attack to battle your way through the game and there are six different stages to conquer in total. There are also bonus stages along the way as well and this all makes for a pretty enjoyable game. It can become a little confusing as to what exactly is coming next as the screen sort of seems to judder and it's not quite as flowing as it could be but in all a pretty good handheld. Well, if we start with Tiger's handheld version of Afterburner, I would say that they did a really nice job. It's got nice simple controls, great sound effects, and they're actually on an even par with the tabletop version I reviewed earlier today in part seven. It also has a rather nice backdrop theme and also has great in-game effects such as the sea, which gives you that great sense of movement and it all makes for a really nice game. As for Sonic itself, well, this is a pretty good game as well. Excellent gameplay, it tells a really nice story. Um, it also has nice simple controls and great sound effects. Although to be honest, I'd rather play the video game itself, but this is still a really nice handheld. And these are great handhelds for taking just about anywhere and playing when you've got uh, five or 10 minutes to spare and are really good fun. Well, if you like to own any of these items that I'm showing you in part eight today, then as for the Super Cobra, you're probably looking at anything from 20 to 40 pounds or 20 to 40 dollars. And if you come across these, I seriously recommend that you pick these up because these are becoming very rare. As for the handhelds themselves, well, I'm sure a lot of you have probably got these kind of handhelds from Tiger and you're probably looking at to pay anything from one to three, four, five pounds for these. Um, as for the packaged ones in their original plastic packaging, then you're probably looking at anything from 10 to 15 to 20 pounds and the same 
in US dollars but these are all really worth collecting and are all really great fun. Well I really hope you've enjoyed this part 8 and I really hope you've enjoyed this double bill Sunday special today and I'll be back next week for part 9 of video games and consoles from the loft. Well once again enjoy the rest of your Sunday, have a great week, take care and once again thanks for watching. I'll be out of the